my name's Rory Quirk and today we're going to be slowly stepping a little further into the world of Schoenberg's secrets. This is the book in its current form but after editing it'll probably be about half that size but the same content will all still be there. I'd like to address the question why Schoenberg's secrets now? The full title of the book is Schoenberg's secrets be a musical genius. It's important to note that Arnold Schoenberg was largely self-taught and liked to think for himself. Many people would consider Arnold Schoenberg's theory of harmony as too difficult. However, since the creation of Schoenberg's secrets, some may argue that this task has now become too simple. Traditionally, classical music is split into three categories when being studied by composers. These divisions are made up of harmony, counterpoint, and form. It is also important to note that Arnold Schoenberg wrote other textbooks such as the models for beginners in composition, obviously theory of harmony, his book on form, fundamentals of musical composition, the unfinished preliminary exercises in counterpoint, and the notoriously excellent structural functions of harmony. You may have noticed that these books progressively got smaller in size. By the time you get to the final book, it is so small that if you look very closely and try your hardest, at that moment, you actually become a musical genius. Jokes aside, Arnold Schoenberg's theory of harmony is possibly the most rigorous and the most accessible of all, and therefore, for aspiring composers, is perhaps the best place to begin. If theory of harmony is something you're genuinely interested in, the best place to begin, in my opinion, would be to buy yourself a copy of the book and read it. Also, you can get your book spiral bound for about $5, so it lays flat easily when you're playing the exercises at the piano. I would like to share two secrets of my own about studying theory of harmony. The first of which is a problem that I had when I originally began studying the book. That problem was turning pages. So I would get to a certain place in the book and it would reference somewhere else in the book. And I found that I was extremely reluctant to turn pages. So if that's a barrier you have, don't worry, you get over that pretty soon. The second secret was that when I began studying examples and creating my own root progression sketches, I found that I often ran into trouble with making mistakes and not knowing how I was supposed to be expected to see and prevent these mistakes in advance, which became frustrating. Also, how was I to remember the tens of thousands of possibilities for connecting all kinds of chords and their inversions in different regions in a way that was coherent and instantly accessible by me? The answer to these questions, of course, lays in Schoenberg's secrets. Schoenberg's secrets takes theory of harmony from a chore and makes it into a game. In discussing Schoenberg's secrets, it's important to remember that there are a lot of limitations in theory of harmony, limitations which you are free to abandon at any point in creating your own sketches. You've probably heard of Arnold Schoenberg's Emancipation of the Dissonance. We can also think of Schoenberg's secrets as being the emancipation of Arnold Schoenberg's theory of harmony, a brilliant yet sorely neglected treatise by the father of modern music himself. I'm just standing here looking at some examples written by Arnold Schoenberg about harmony and how to sketch harmonic progressions. It's pretty interesting. If you'd like to know more about sketching root progressions and how to become a harmonic genius, or at least a musical thinker on a genius level as far as harmony is concerned, look no further than Theory of Harmony. Also, Schoenberg's Secrets, so handy for when you're doing this stuff, you can pretty much sketch anything. Therefore, please stay tuned for more examples, actual musical examples from both books. Next video. See you there. A brilliant but sorely ne 